Hey everyone, welcome back. A few months ago I did a video on how to convert a Troncy printer to Marlin. Today I'm going to show you the updated way that they've changed it on the GitHub. And I also am going to show you how I had a problem with my auto level sensor and possibly a bad board pin and how to change pin configurations. Next. Hello everyone, so I'm back at the computer now and I'm going to show you the new version of the Marlin for the Tronxy and how to update to it. It's super easy, it's really easy to follow along with. Um, I'm going to start with, um, you're going to go to github.com rhapsody slash Marlin. I will post this link in the description for the video and you're actually going to download um, where it says code here just click on download the zip and then download it however you want unzip it however you want and then what you're gonna do is you are gonna go to the Visual Studio Code um, I did show this all in the last video so if you want to watch the last video um, for a refresher for this uh, I'm not going to go through the steps on how to download it or anything because that's all in that previous video. So please feel free to watch it. You're going to navigate over to the Marlin Tronxy full folder and you're going to open it. And it's going to show up right here on this side. What you're going to do is once it loads up, you're going to go to Marlin. Whoops. You're going to go to Marlin, pardon me, and you're going to go to your Configuration H. Now this is how easy this is. It is going to, let me just close off all these updates real quick here. Um, you are simply going to define what board you have. Okay. This would be the board you have. Okay, here. Let me do this. All right. You are going to go to, when you open your case, you're going to look at your motherboard. It's going to have your board version written on it. It's going to be a V8, or in the case of my board, it's going to be a, a V6 board. So I have the V6191017 board. So what you're going to do is look for your board which is that first set of numbers. Under the define here, it's the V6, the V5, um, or the V6. I believe the V5s are the same as the V6s. I can confirm that, or if somebody would like to confirm that in the comments, that would be wonderful. Now, the next bit, the 330 here, the 400 and the 500, that's going to be your bed size. That's how big your bed is going to be. Okay. And then this last one where it says Titan or no Titan. A Titan extruder is, um, let me see here. Uh, all right. This is a regular extruder here. Um, this is the one my machine comes with. Well, it's not this exact one. The style of extruder is the one that I have for my machine. This is a regular um, Bowden extruder. And what happens is the filament goes in uh, one side and comes out the other right here. You'll actually see it pass through the gear. This is a non-Titan extruder. If you have something that looks like this, where you pass the filament through, and it goes out the other side and it has a lid or a cover on it, the cover may be see-through, that would be a Titan extruder. It also has this really big wheel usually, okay? So that's how you'll tell the difference. So you are going to click off and uncomment the one that is for your machine. Okay, I have an XY2, so thank you Emmanuel Hayez for this. This makes my job super easy. So I have an XY2, I have the V6 board, 
Uh, my bed size is 255 and I do not have a Titan extruder. So I am just simply going to uncheck or uncomment just like this, that. So now that's all set up for my board. The next thing I have to pick is whether I want the display to look like. Now the LVGL, I'm actually not sure exactly what that does. I'm going to have to do a little research into it. But there's the classic UI or the color UI. I like the color UI because my printer is blue and it has a pretty blue color. So I am going to uncheck that. And you are pretty much done at this point. All you have to do from here is click on the little alien head dude here and again I'll show you in that previous video of Tronxy to Marlin firmware video that was posted a few months ago has all the information on how to download the software necessary to do this okay so you might want to go have a look at that and get yourself familiar with that and then come back and have a look at this all right so that being said, I'm going to click build and it is going to build my firmware. Now it's important that you remember where you unzipped your file to because that's where your new firmware is going to be stored. So once you're done compiling it, you're going to have to go into that and you're going to copy that firmware onto your SD card and that's how you're going to update. So we're going to let this compile for a minute and we should receive a successful compile once this is done. I feel like playing the Jeopardy music right now but I'm not going to but yeah, so it's just going to compile, it's going to do its thing, my computer is a little bit older, so it is a bit slow, but it should work pretty good. So, you see how it says one succeeded here? And it's going to say, my cheat U version 5, that's, the, okay, so that is the board base, and I have a success. So. What I'm going to do now is go into where I unzip my file. I'm going to go into my Marlin. I'm going to go into this PIO file. Go into builds. Go into the ChitU5 file. And you're going to see down here there's going to be an update file. You're going to need to copy that onto your SD card and then you're going to be able to flash it alright you can copy the whole thing if you want just copy the I believe it's just copy the update I haven't done this in a while so but I believe it's just copy the update onto your SD card and you throw it into your printer it will beep I think six to eight times and then you'll get proper firmware so now that being said and that being done, let me tell you about a little problem I had. I'm going to show you a video where I had a problem with my bed leveling. What was happening, as you can see in the video, is when I went to home it, it wasn't homing. It was actually going up instead of down. Now, when I checked it through... Um, Pronter face, I noticed that my Z min was always triggered. So what I did was I actually had to go into the pins, and I'll show you that right now. If I um,
Where are my pins? I've forgotten where my pins are. That's alright. Nothing big? No. SRC, there it is. Alright. So, what I had to do was I have to reprogram my pins. I figure it's because it's always triggered whether there's something plugged into it or not. I figured I would have a look at the board and see what I could do to um, plug it into a different port. So I'm going to show you that right now. Let's see if I can find a picture of my board. Uh, where did I have it here? There we go. Okay. So this is the Tronxy board that I have. Now, I believe this is the filament here. This is my Zmin. This is the port I was having a problem with, if memory serves me correctly. This is a Zmax. I believe this is my Ymin and my Xmin. Um, but this one was the one I was having a problem with. It was always triggered. So I didn't see anything in the firmware about the Z Max, but there is a filament 2 pin right here. So what I did was, I'm going to see if I can show you here. What you have to do is you got to go in and you got to find where your board is and I believe it's right here remember how we said that it was a, a Chichu V5 V6 mine's the V6 board right because it's defining the V6 so I'm gonna go in there and I am gonna scroll through all of this and you see how my Z stop pin here is a PG9? I'm going to keep scrolling and I'm going to see if I can find a different pin to assign that to. So these are all my pins. These are the pins definitions for my steppers, my Ys, my Zs, my Z2 if I had one, my extruder 0 and my extruder 1. There's my temperature my hotbed, my fans, and filament runout. Now this is the thing, you see here? This is my filament runout pin one. I wanna leave that alone. But see how my filament runout pin is two? Is this PF13? So I'm just gonna here, let me just copy that. And then we're gonna go back up. And we're gonna see where my pin is. My Z stop is a PG9. So I'm just going to paste that other pin in there, go down, and rename the pen. I believe, I, what did I say, PG9? Yeah. So, and that is it. So now that's going to tell my firmware that instead of looking at this pin here for my Zmin, it's going to look at this port here for my Zmin. So the only problem with this is because of this large ribbon cable, what I had to do was I just had to run my new sensor directly into here. And I'll show you a picture of that in a minute. So yeah, that's pretty much it. And then all I have to do is... Um, we're just going to go back. So we have this resigned, the pin resigned for my printer, and we have the, um, the proper pin printer under the configuration H. So now I'm just going to, again, build my firmware. And that should be it. I should be up and running. So yeah guys, so um, that's the new way to install Marlin. I hope that it helped you out. Um, it's really simple and straightforward. You basically need to pick your board 
and then you need to um, pick your bed size and whether you have a tight knit extruder or not. Um, and I also showed you how I reprogrammed the pins, reassigned the pins on my board because I had a problem with my Z min. My bed wouldn't level properly. Um, it just wasn't working and I found out by using uh, Pronterface that my Z min was constantly triggered. So I don't know if it was the, uh, the original probe or the board just had a bad pin or something. But yeah, so I had to reconfine it to filament two. It seems to be working great now, which is perfect. Um, and that is about it for this video. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, I really appreciate you guys' support. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Um, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And until next time, peace out.